Hello and welcome to Swatch Fest Saturday Live. Today's Swatch Fest Saturday is part three of your favorite cottons that I've been reviewing over these last couple weeks of the month. Today I have awesome four special yarns to talk about. I've got Hobie's Bungee Mini. I've got Juniper Moon Farm Summer Solstice. Lion Brand, Kobu, and then Universal Yarn, Bamboo Pop. So there's a wide range of cotton blend yarns today. When I asked for your suggestions, I asked not only for cotton, but also cotton blends, because I know that sometimes 100% cotton is not exactly what you're looking for, even if you want it to primarily be cotton. So if you're joining me in the live, stop by and say hi in the chat, let me know you're here, and we'll get right into our first yarn. This is Hobie Bungie Mini. And before it was recommended to me, I had never heard of this yarn. And then when I found it and purchased it, I was like, what the heck? And I have to say, even swatching it, I'm still a little puzzled why this would be somebody's favorite cotton or cotton blend yarn. But I think it comes down to preference versus quality because I didn't have any issues with the quality of this yarn. I just found that this yarn wasn't particularly for me. So this, it's black, so it's kind of hard to see. I got the black because I had a feeling this yarn was gonna be something that was used for more decorative types of yarn. And I was absolutely right. So here we go, it's a white out a little bit. So this yarn is a cotton tube stuffed with polyester. I'll show you on the end here. Actually, I'll pull a little bit of the polyester out because you can. So there is the polyester filling inside of a knit tube. So because the filling is white on this black yarn, you can actually see, maybe not on my webcam, but in person, you can actually see that this is a, a, a very fine knit tube, almost with like a cotton thread. And so why don't I go ahead and pull up the swatches so you guys, well, actually, no, I have them. I have the real ones right here. So this is the crochet swatch. Now, this yarn is so large. It's a super bulky yarn that I, I had a crochet hook big enough to swatch with, but I didn't have a knitting needle big enough to swatch with. So I actually had to order one in order to make these swatches. So I used a 10 millimeter crochet hook, which is like an N slash P. And it's just huge. It's massive. Working with this yarn, I found it to be a little difficult and hard on the hands, not only because that hook and the needles are so big, but the yarn is so big going through your fingers. And there is a stretch quality to the yarn that makes it difficult when you're working at a tighter gauge, because I was on the lower end of the recommended needle size for this yarn. When I was going to pull my hook through the loops or my needles through the loops, the yarn wanted to stretch instead of actually come through. So I really felt like I was fighting this yarn and it was hard on my hands. So it just wasn't a like preferable experience for me. And it's so big and chunky that I don't think that I would use this yarn for any wearables. I don't think that I'd enjoy a hat this thick. I don't think I'd, maybe a cowl, maybe, but like mittens, no clothes definitely not and um, this is a yarn that i think is designed and best used for home decor or possibly like you could not only knitting or crochet you could weave with this yarn into like some home decor items or maybe it would be good for macrame as well i don't know a lot about macrame but i know that it uses big round type material so here's the knit swatch I do think it's cool to see the stitch definition in such a large form, which you'll see is why the patterns that I chose to go with this yarn are home decor patterns. I think that's really the only thing that it lends itself to. I thought briefly, because there's kind of this trend that I've noticed on TikTok of people using super bulky yarn to make giant amigurumi like bees and other octopus, octopi and animals like that. But I think this would be a fight. And I don't think you could go down enough of a hook size so that you wouldn't see the stuffing through the piece. Even, well, I guess this is double crochet. So if you did single crochet, maybe you could, but 
you're going to really be fighting the yarn, which is why I, st I tend to stay away from amigurumi anyways. Um, so before I pull up the slide, let's let me catch up on everybody who's joining this morning. Good morning, Mocha Kim. Thank you for joining. Good morning, Laurie. Good morning, Nitwim Lindsay. And Kim, you're interested in all of these yarns. They're, it is a good variety of yarns. I'm really excited to talk about these today. I would so make a black bag with a purple lining with that. Yeah, so the only other thing is it might get a little heavy the more yarn that you use. This yarn is sold in 200 gram batches and out of my two swatches, it's almost gone. And my swatches aren't that big. So I would be a little concerned about the bag getting a little heavy by the time you've made up all that area. But if, if you wanted a big bulky knit look or a big bulky crochet look on the outside of a bag, this would be, this would be the yarn to go with. It is going to be lighter than some of your other bulky yarns because it is basically a stuffed tube. Um, looks like rug yarn. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Lori. <laughs> it looks like rug yarn. It, it, it looks like rug yarn, but it does not feel like rug yarn at all. This yarn is super soft. It's like um, like a jersey knit fabric feeling on the outside of the yarn stuffed with the polyester. So let's go ahead and go over to the slides. Here we are. So swatch review part three. And here is the Hobie Bungie Mini. Now, surprisingly, I found that this yarn, this is the small like this the thinnest version of their bungee yarn <laughs> it gets even bigger <laughs> i have a feeling maybe it the bigger ones most likely are used for like the arm knitting type of like materials i because i don't i already feel like this mini version is really big it's a super bulky so it's 42 percent cotton that's that outer knit casing and then 58 percent polyester which is that white stuffing on the inside you only get 66 yards for 200 grams of yarn that like i said it just doesn't go very far uh it works up quickly for the most part if you don't struggle as hard as i did with the bulk in your hands i'm used to working with finer yarns already and that could have been part of my struggle but also like i said the yarn was a little stretchy and i struggled with that too but if you feel comfortable working with big stretchy yarn i imagine you could get an item done in an hour but it might take a lot of yarn, which takes me to the next point. The price point is kind of high, which you're going to see this. You're, you are getting 200 grams of yarn. So for $13.90, generally we've been looking at yarns in about 100 gram put-ups or even 50 gram put-ups, but 100 grams, cut that in half, you know, you're looking at a, like almost $7 for 50 grams, which, you know, that's not too, or <laughs> $7 for 100 grams generally that's on the higher end of the yarns that we've been looking at even when you take into account that this is a 200 gram ball of yarn so 1390 seems high it is high it's still even on a little bit higher in general but it is not the most expensive yarn that i've bought and we'll get to that one next <laughs> like i said i used the 10 millimeter needle and hook for both of these it was on the lower side of what's recommended for the yarn let me check the ball band real quick just to, yeah. So it said we could go down to 10 millimeter for crochet hook, but it recommended you start at a 12 millimeter for knitting needles, uh, which I didn't really look at. So I used the 10 millimeter, which also could be a reason why I was fighting it a little bit. But yeah. Um, and then the, what I have about the notes is the construction. It is an interesting and uniquely constructed yarn. It's like knitting with, you know, kind of like a stuffed animal string, right? Because it's a stuffed tube. It's it's interesting to work with. I don't know that this would be my top choice to work with again, though. Although I did find some knit and crochet patterns that I wanted to share if this is your style. This is just not my style is what it comes down to. So maybe that's why it was recommended to me. The person that uses it loves to make items that work well with this yarn. So Hobie, who creates the yarn, has a great selection of free patterns on their website that are both knit and crochet for items that I would recommend for this yarn, like this pillow. So this is the bungee ribbed pillow. They have a square. They also have a rectangle pattern and they're free on their website. And I think that this would be a cute decorative throw. Um, let me check the label real quick. Um, 
yeah, I think it's hand wash only is what the label's looking like. And that is a little concerning because my swatches are still wet. I hand wash everything just to be safe because I primarily work with wool outside of this cotton uh, swatch fest. And I found that this, for whatever reason, this yarn does not want to dry. And I don't think polyester doesn't absorb water. It, it, at all. So I don't know why it's still wet, but it is too. I started swatching these Thursday and it's now Saturday morning. So all of my other swatches have dried. This one has not. I've been tempted to put it in the dryer. I'm glad I checked the label. It's not recommended. Um, although I feel like you could get away with it. I'm not sure. So yeah, that is a little concerning, but something with decorative throw pillows, you wouldn't have to wash them very often. And then the basket, I really like the texture on the basket and the fact that they went with handles that weren't crocheted. I think that's going to add a little bit of durability to that basket. And if you're working it as tight of a gauge as I did for my swatches, these I didn't even show you. Let me drop the slide real quick and show you these swatches they're still wet so they're going to have a little more drape just from the weight of the water on them but there's not there's really not a lot of drape and so you can get a nice stiff st standing up on its own basket knit or crocheted there's the crochet swatch so i do think that it would be a good yarn choice for these baskets and then for the knitting patterns, there is the Lapland pillow, which is just a basic stock and knit pillow. And I think, again, if you like that knit and crochet look, then this would be a cute little decorative item in your house. For me, I don't think that it would be worth fighting the yarn because I personally felt like I was just fighting the yarn and it was hard on my hands. But if you like working with big bulky yarns and you like this type of pillow, I think it would be a match made in heaven. That's the other thing I didn't mention. This yarn, because it's a stuffed tube, is really squishy and comfortable. It's almost, the swatch could almost be a pillow on its own, which reminds me when I was working with it, I also thought it might be a good yarn for something like a cat bed or like a, a, a small little area rug. I wouldn't put it in the bathroom probably if it's having issues drying. Um, <laughs> but if it was like an area rug in a kitchen, I do think that it would hold up well uh, to a little bit of abuse, especially if you decided to weave a rug with this yarn. I think that would be really fun. Uh, and then the other pattern that I found, also another free pattern on the Hobie website, is the Finland pillow. It's a little harder to see because they use the black, but I believe it's in moss stitch. So you got your knits and your pearls to give it some texture. Personally, I think I'd enjoy laying on the stockinette pillow, but the moss stitch pillow looks cool, but I don't know because the stitches are so bulky, how great that would feel using it for the purpose of a pillow versus just being a decorative throw pillow. Awesome. So that is all I wanted to say about the bungee yarn. Let me catch up with you guys. Um, Let's see, that is what it is. I'm looking for my Jersey yarn right now. And the only difference is that my yarn isn't stuffed. What is the Jersey yarn? Are there other yarns like this one? This is the first time I've ever seen a yarn that's been made up like this, but that's generally because I'm not working in this thick range of yarns and I don't do a lot of home decor items either. Uh, hey, Marquita, thanks for joining this morning. Everybody's saying, hey. Uh, Y'all don't forget to give the chat a thumbs up. Oh, thank you, Marquita, yeah. Definitely give it a thumbs up. It helps other people get this video in front of other people who might also enjoy to learn more about these yarns. The basket is awesome. I do. I, I've, I've made a basket out of crochet before out of a different type of yarn and it just collapsed on me and I absolutely hated it. And it, I just used the completely wrong type of yarn. Had I gone back and remade this basket, something like this bungee mini would be an ideal yarn because uh, you want it to stand up on its own and actually be functional as a basket, or at least I would. I'm not as into like decor and aesthetics as I am to functionality, which the basket I made was not functional. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. So it looks like the basket was a favorite. Uh, 
really trying to the Hobie yarn. So, you know, the one thing that I didn't miss mention about Hobie's website is when you look at their yarn in the upper right hand corner, you actually pay less the more you buy. So they kind of give you a bulk discount. So the $13.90 price is for one hank of the bungee mini. But I think once you bought three hanks, it dropped down to like $10 a skein. And if you buy more, it goes down even more from there, kind of like a tiered bulk discount kind of a structure, which is great when you're looking at buying larger amounts for bigger projects. Like if you were going to actually make an entire area rug, maybe not a full size area rug, but you know, because this yarn doesn't go very far, if you were going to make a decent sized project, at least you'd be getting a discount the more that you buy. Um, if you expected me to talk to you out of buying from Hobie. Yes, I know Kim loves her Hobie yarn too. We've talked about this before. Um, she is more versed in their yarns than I am. Um, so the bungee mini, was I fighting with it being splitty? No, absolutely not. It, it the, the, the knit tube is so tightly knit, like I said, like a Jersey fabric that there was no way that my big hook and big needles, let me actually show you. Cause I think I have it in my, little swatch bag here here are the this is the hook that I used and the needles that I used they are so big and chunky that there was no chance that I was gonna split any of those tiny stitches the only problem that I had was that it was a stretchy yarn which instead of like coming through the stitch it just was stretching itself out and it it just put a little extra tension against my work than I was wanting to deal with. I wonder how it would work with the loose set fork. Um, I think you'd have to get a pretty big sized fork to work with it. Um, I know they make big ones. I just don't know. I, I guess I would assume they would make them that big for some other decorative items. But again, I don't know exactly how well with the stretch factor of the yarn, how that would work, but it would be pretty. It does have great stitch definition because of how round it is. Um, <laughs> maxed out my yarn budget. That is how I feel. Lady Dye Yarns July sale. Lady Dye Yarns, is that an indie dyer? I've never heard of them before. Um, how many yards is the mini? I was a little late. Yeah, it was 66 yards only for 200 grams. So it doesn't it doesn't get super far, but it does fill up a lot of space on its way. Um, Hobie has Jersey yarn, it's called Ribbon. Oh, is it, so have you worked with mini bungee too? Is it like an empty tube? Is that exactly the same thing? I wonder if that's all they did was stuff their ribbon. <laughs> uh, Lion Brand has some too that there's Rewind, but there's a cotton one too, but I can't remember the name. Huh, I'll have to give those a try. I haven't really adventured too much into more of the decorative, um, like art yarns. Um, thank you for explaining, of course. And I have a big one. <laughs> okay, awesome. Now that we're all caught up, let's move on to the next yarn, which is the most expensive yarn that I've purchased in this entire Favorite Cottons series. And that is Juniper Moon Farms summer solstice yarn. And I found out through my research that this yarn isn't that old. It's relatively new, which made it difficult to find patterns. So my recommended patterns was really all that I could find, unfortunately. I have the luxury in the other yarns of searching through several different types of patterns to find the ones that I liked the best for that yarn. But for the summer solstice, I did not get that luxury because I could not find that many patterns that recommended this specific yarn. So this is Juniper Moon Farm, and that's my hair. <laughs> Summer Solstice. Now, I think the reason this yarn is so expensive is because of the blend. It is a wide blend of fibers. You've got 48% linen, 24% cotton, 24% viscose, and 4% polyester. I think the polyester is the Tweety Bits, and... Um, I think the viscose is our shiny bits that give us a look of and feel of silk. And then the linen, it does give it a little bit of a rougher hand than you would expect considering the other contents, but it is next to skin wearable soft and linen washes and softens over time. And then the 24% cotton, um, you can see wrapped around everything. 
when I unplied this yarn, some individual strands were 100% of the fiber type. So it's not a blended fiber that is then all spun together. It is different plies of the contents all together. At least that's what it appeared when I unplied it and looked at it. That's what it looked like. At least the cotton appears to be separate from the viscose and polyester, which I think the polyester is the tweeds. So let me show you my swatches. This yarn is super fine, super fine. And you can kind of see that. Here's my crochet swatch. I used a very small hook for this and it's surprisingly listed as a sport weight yarn. And I, I don't know if that has to do with its uh, yardage to weight ratio because I felt like this worked up more like a fingering weight yarn, honestly. The only way that I feel like it could be pushed into sport weight is because there is a texture. And I don't know how well my camera can pick it up. There is a thick and thin texture to the yarn on its own. I think my knit swatch will show it better. I will say though, before I put this one away, it's got drape and you get that from the linen. And I love that so much. I do think that this yarn is very suitable for wearables and any other drapey accessories like shawls. Um, cowls, I don't like to be so drapey. I like them to have some body to them, but shawls, definitely. I love the drape and a shawl and a sweater or a top. Um, because just because this is a primarily cotton blend doesn't mean it would make a, a bad sweater because uh, we tend to think of cotton for summer, but it would you can have cotton sweaters, too. We buy cotton sweaters, so um, like mostly sweatshirts or cotton. But let me show you the knit swatch because you'll see the texture there. You can see the thick and thin a little bit more clearly in the knit swatch. So I do think that is a fun bonus to this style of yarn. I love the way that the colors worked up because it's not solid orange. It has depth to it as well as those tweedy bits, which I really enjoy. And I think the depth and color comes from the way that the different fibers takes that dye um, and the fact that um, polyester tends to be shiny, viscose and polyester tend to be shiny, whereas linen and cotton can be duller unless the cotton's been treated, which this one didn't specify. And the drape there is amazing. The only thing, and it's got decent stretch too. The only thing about this yarn is it was a little splitty. I did find myself splitting some stitches. I don't know if it will pick that up at all, but I did find myself splitting some stitches and that had to do with the fact that there's not a tight twist on the plies and then the thick and thin nature of the yarn. I do think that it would be worth dealing with the tight, a little bit of splittiness that was in the yarn, but this is an expensive yarn. So let me show you the um, slides after I catch up with you guys. We got some off topic. Yes, Lady Dye Yarns, Indie Dye Company. Check them out on Instagram. They have yarn in lots of kits and they have a 20% off store wide sale. Wow, that is a good deal. You don't see sales that high usually for indie dyers. Oh, they have a mission. I'll definitely check that out. Uh, thanks, Marquita. Uh, side note, love your nails. <laughs> so my nails was me experimenting with the fact that this black fingernail polish I bought stains my fingers when I take it off. So I was like, you know what, I'll just try black with orange glitter over the top. But then I went, I got carried away with the coats and it's like this weird, Yeah, I don't know if I'll be doing this again, but I do love me some orange glitter. <laughs> oh my goodness, the drape. This, it, it's one of them. It has the best drape almost out of, well, not the best drape because I've got other drapey swatches to share today, but it is one of the best draping swatches that I've done up to this point. Um, you're so right. All my store-bought sweaters are 50% cotton and they keep me pretty warm. Yeah. It's just something that we don't really think about as knitters and crocheters. We think, you know, cotton summer, but it doesn't, it doesn't have to just be for summer. And thank you, Marquita. I, I like them. I just maybe would have only done one coat of the glitter instead of two. It was a bit too much. Okay, so let me show you just how expensive this Juniper Moon Farm is because it's up there. $20 for 100 grams. So 
I mean, at least for a T for my size, I'm going to need probably at least three of these, maybe four. So you're looking at between $60 to $80, which isn't that expensive when you're comparing it to things like indie dyed wool or luxury and wool or wool cashmere blends but with the yarns that we've been looking at that are primarily cotton or cotton blend yarns this is the most expensive one you can get i do think it's a luxury yarn i think the quality is incredible and the drape is definitely worth it it just is on the higher price point of things and like i mentioned earlier they've got this at a sport weight and i think it's because of the yardage to weight ratio you've got 295 yards there for 100 grams which is generally putting you in the sport rate weight range although when you look at my details on the swatches i used a three millimeter hook which is in between a c and a d and it's pretty small and with the knitting needles i used a u as two and a half which is super tiny at the only other time i've knit yarn that tight outside of socks is when I knit a 100% linen tank top. And it has to do with the fact that linen is a more rigid fiber. So when you work with it, it doesn't fill those gaps. And I didn't want a super sheer top. So I went down to, I think a US two for that top and it took forever to knit, but I love the top. It's amazing. It's comfortable. It's got great drape. It was worth it. I just wouldn't call it sport weight yarn when I'm working with something so small. My gauge is tiny too, uh, five stitches per inch and two and a half rows per inch for the crochet and then six, stitch, st six stitches per inch and 11 rows, 11 rows per inch with knitting. This is why I will frequently say crochet is faster than knitting. And there are a lot of variables that go into something like a statement like that, whether you are more experienced at knitting or more experienced at crochet. But if you strip as much away as you can, you've got someone who is a decently fast crocheter, a decently fast knitter, experienced in both. Crochet is can be like four times faster if you're working in double crochet because you get to work the height. Look at that, two and a half rows is one inch versus 11 rows is one inch. It's going to take you so much longer to knit with this yarn than it would to crochet with it at a double crochet uh, stitch pattern. Um, yeah, that was a whole side rant, but I, I, I feel like personally I would call this fingering weight yarn. I, and I mentioned already in the notes introduced for spring and summer of 2021. So that doesn't mean that it came out like just a few months ago. Sometimes yarns launch for the season a couple months before the season. So I don't have the exact date, but that is the collection for this spring and summer. And I do, I think they came up with a nice and unique blend of fibers. I went looking on yarnsub.com, which if you haven't heard of yarnsub.com, it's a great resource for substituting yarns because they give you kind of a checklist. Once you type in the yarn into the search box, they'll populate and they have a wide database of yarns too, not just like United States based yarns, but international yarns as well. And even less popular yarns, it will tell you like, oh, the weight matches, the fiber content matches, the construction matches or doesn't match. So you get a percent match and they'll give you notes on like the areas where it doesn't match where your problem areas would be if you substitute that yarn. So I went looking and there were not a lot of yarns like this one. There were no 100% matches. There were like some 80% matches. And I did that when I was looking for pattern recommendations, like I said, because there were so few patterns that use this yarn. I thought maybe I can find a yarn that's similar and a pattern and recommend something like that, but I just was not able to find anything because this is a very unique, a new and unique yarn. Uh, so Marquita asks, is it organic? I don't think so. Normally, companies will go out of their way to let you know it's organic because it costs more to get that organic certification. It does not say organic, which... Um, most likely is because it's got the viscose and polyester in it. They could have maybe said they used organic cotton or, or organic linen, but it doesn't say that next to either of those. But I know the viscose and polyester would automatically disqualify the yarn from being organic overall. Um, now there's a video idea. Sorry, I didn't catch up on the comments fast enough. What is your video idea, Kim? <laughs> 
Are you talking about yarn, the yarn sub website? $20 donut and still not organic. Yikes. Yeah, I think the price point has to do with most likely the way this yarn is created. It is not a typical construction type yarn. Uh, so that could be my only guess. But it does also fall in line with this company's general price points as well because they typically tend to sell more luxurious fibers and they all tend to be around $20 for 100 grams from, in my experience. Okay, so let's look at the patterns. So I did find some, some cute crochet patterns. And I personally, I'm not a fan of these kind of tops that go over other tops. So I would have looked for something a little more solid that really shows off the drape. Once you start clustering stitches, you can lose that drape just because of the nature of the fabric having those clusters in the chains. Uh, but you can see, especially in this au natural crop top, it still has drape despite having some clustered areas and the open work. I really like the fit on this one. I really like the details on the top of the sleeves and around the bottom of the top. The only problem is that this pattern's not available on its own. It's only available in this colorful crochet lace book, which it made me laugh because the title of the, of the book is Colorful Crochet Lace. And this sample tends to to be, it happened to be beige, which is not colorful at all, which is surprising because I did find that this line of yarn has some great bright colors, like I grabbed the orange, but I think that maybe they were looking for a little more versatility in their book. I don't really know all the details that go into putting a book together. I know that there, it is a lot, and there are a lot of opinions about color schemes and palettes, so, uh, but I did like the design overall. And then the other top, um, you can see that this is actually from Juniper Moon Farm. So that's primarily what I found is that they hired some people to design patterns with this yarn, most likely for its release. That's the best way to sell yarn is to go ahead and already have patterns available that use that yarn. So this is Erin by Ursula O'Connor. And I, I feel like the sleeves here are lacking a little bit, but it probably has to do with ease of construction. It's I feel like you can't decide whether it's a tank top or a t-shirt, but it does look nice. And it's a mostly open mesh top, which means it's going to work up quickly despite this yarn being such a fine gauge. Uh, and I, you can't, I don't think the pattern does that great of a job showing the drape because it is such a tight fitting pattern. I don't know if that was the intention or if that was the sample to the model size or not. I think that I personally would probably make this pattern a size up just to show off some of the drape ability that this yarn can give like in the other top on the left. All right, Kim says, two yarnies, one crochets and one knits the same yarns and compares speed, drape, texture, et cetera. Good way for people to find out which yarns are better for crochet or knitting. I think that's a great idea, Kim. I think we could definitely put something together about that. <laughs> Okay, and then the knit patterns that I found uh, was Hazel, which is another pattern that was put out by Junior Poon Moon Farm uh, by Ursula O'Connor. And this one is a, like a knit shawl stole type pattern. And I do think this lends itself well to the yarn because it does show off the drape. There's lacy detail, which this yarn doesn't have the best stitch definition. So you're going to lose that a little bit, but it does give some interest to the overall shawl. So I do think that it works. It's not like this yarn is so thick and thin that it completely loses the detail of the lace, but um, it does do, it does soften it a little bit. And then I really liked this other pattern that I found, this Amy Simple Shawl. It actually uses two yarns, and I don't remember the other yarn. It's the variegated yarn that you see there, I think. No, it's the... I'm honestly not which, sure which one's which because it's so tiny on my screen right now, but you can see the color changes. So one yarn is the other yarn and one yarn is the summer solstice. And because the summer solstice works up a little more airy, you get this fun, very stark transition between the two yarns despite them being a similar color. And I think that's a fun and interesting way to use this yarn. Uh, and I do think that it takes advantage of the drape 
working it up into a shawl as well. Um, Kim, it also means you'll not have to buy more than two skeins so they are aware their pricing point is on the high end. Absolutely, absolutely. So that is Juniper Moon Farm, which takes me to my favorite yarn I've swatched with so far. This was the most recommended yarn out of all the yarns that I got sent my way. And once I got to working with it, I was not surprised that this is the most recommended yarn I got for cotton and cotton blends. And that's Lion Brand Kobu. I've seen several designs come out from independent designers using this yarn. I've seen a lot of people making patterns with this yarn and it seemed to be generally hyped up, which most of the time it's like, oh, am I gonna believe all the hype, right? I'm generally someone who's pretty skeptical at first. So I'm glad that I decided to go on this adventure of swatching your yarns so I could see for myself. And immediately, I knew when I bought it and touched it that it was one of the softest yarns out of all the yarns that I bought but working with it these swatches wow so this is a cotton blend it's a 51 percent cotton 49 percent rayon from bamboo and i actually think this one that's what this ball band says but i've seen it on the on the internet as well as 50 50 so i don't know if at some point they changed their ratio or not but here is my crochet swatch and there is more drape look at that swing <laughs> there's more drape than there is in the juniper moon farm like this one's not gonna swing this one swings like this this has amazing drape it's super soft it's pretty fluffy like in double crochet uh you still get those that gapping but it's not massive and i just the yarn feels plump it's a great thickness it's a great feel overall i love this yarn a lot the only thing is I did find it to be a little splitty, which I had been warned about. Um, I split it in crochet and I split it in knitting. Not enough that I don't think that it would be worth working with. You can see I've got a, a split on my cast on. It's not enough that I don't think it would be worth working with because I still was able to get a very nice fabric for both of these. That drape, I really, like, I can't get over it. It is amazing. Um, the reason it's so splitty, there are so many plies here and they're not super tightly wound. So as you work with it, they'll kind of puff open from each other. Not necessarily untwist, they just puff open, which I think is also why this is such a puffy yarn. I notice it more in the crochet stitch than I do the other ones. And by puffy, I just mean that it's got some air in it. It's, you can squish it. It doesn't feel dense or compact. It's, it is very impressive. And I have to say for being 50%, uh, what did they say, rayon from bamboo? Yes, rayon from bamboo, that it's surprisingly not that shiny. So rayon from bamboo or viscose from bamboo, because it's that synthetic fiber, it tends to be really shiny and this is not a shine that bothers me like i would wear this on in a top i would wear this in the shawl uh you could make just about anything that you wanted to have drape in right so again i probably wouldn't use it for a cowl i probably wouldn't use it for a hat uh definitely not socks uh you don't want drapey socks but when you're looking at garments like this is the garment and shawl yarn to use and i think that you're gonna get the biggest bang, like the biggest, the biggest results from choosing a pattern that takes advantage of the drape of this yarn. Um, and then, oh, I was gonna say, last week I mentioned um, the Knit Picks or We Crochet Worsted Comfy being the softest yarn out of the whole bunch, and it is. It is just slightly softer than this Lion Brand Kobu, but that may just be because of the way that I feel I experience softness. I feel like that fuzzy soft that you get from the Comfy Worsted is softer than the silky soft that you get from Kobu. So Kobu has a silky type smooth softness to it. Whereas you guys saw the little bit of pilling I was already having on my swatch last week. The Comfy Worsted is like a fuzzy soft. Um, 
So that would be the difference. And I think it's the way I experience that fuzzy soft is softer than the silky soft, but they are like neck and neck when it comes to softness. Um, let's see here. <laughs> Everybody knows the Kobu is so good. Uh, because Kim Stan told you she did. She told me that this was is such an amazing yarn. And Lindsay Nitwim, well, I need some Kobu. You do. I know that um, I've been chatting with uh, Nitwim about what kind of yarns would be best to make wearables when you live in a hot climate like the South in the United States. Um, I used to live in Georgia and it would get really, really hot there. And I was perplexed that yarn stores didn't carry more like cotton or linen type yarns for the summer they all carried wool which you can wear wool in the summer but if you're looking for something a little cooler like cotton then it was hard to find yarns like that out there so i know she's on an adventure to find some good yarns to wear in a more a uh, uh, higher temperature climate my love of kobu knows no bounds i love working with it yeah didn't you design a shawl with it i think is what you had said Kim. Um, I used Kobu with Clover G four millimeter hook and also tried my frills swirl and candy shop hooks and the splitting made me give up. How was it with knitting? Yeah. So I use the Addy color coded hooks and that might be a difference. I know that I just filmed, I got my very first furls hook a couple weeks ago, back before I got sick and I had filmed my first impressions and I found, um, that I personally had a little bit of difficulty with the furls hooks, which that'll come out in the video next week. But um, maybe try a different hook and you might not have as much splitting with the yarn, but with the knitting, I it didn't split as much with the knitting as it did with the crochet from what I experienced. Um, so maybe give knitting a try and we'll get to my slides. I think I also used a four millimeter hook for these swatches. Um, and Marquita's asking about the hook. Yeah, I would like to know what the which type um, Kim used as well. You need to use a rounded head hook with it. Yeah, so that I could see that. Uh, the furls hook doesn't have, it does have a, it has like a cone shaped tip that I got a streamline, uh, one of the Pisces uh, ones. It has a cone tip to the top of the hook but it has a wider head than the rest like than the color coded which i'm used to it's also that boy boy style super deep inline uh cutout which i struggle with the color coded they have a much more shallow part at the bottom i always forget what it's called i don't know if it's throat <laughs> And I find that's easier to maneuver in and out of yarns and it doesn't tend to split yarn. So it could be that I didn't struggle with it being splitty as much as other people because of the type of um, hooks that I use. The needles I use are Addy Rockets. They're lace tip needles, which are pointed, which tend to, some people don't like them because they feel like they split yarns because you can actually just pierce right through a yarn that's not even splitty. But I guess I've gotten used to them and I don't have that problem. Um, Marquita says like a boy. That's what the furls hooks are like. They're like boys, boy style. No, no, no. Yes. Boy being the rounded. Furls are like Susan Bates styles where the Addy color coded are like boy styles, which boy is what I learned on. And I find that people prefer the style that they learned on because there's such a drastic difference in your hand movements between the two that when you switch from one to the other, it, you get mad with, if you start with a Susan Bates and you switch to boy, you're gonna feel like you can't hook the yarn because you don't have as much room for it to slip into the, the under part of the hook. Whereas with a boy hook, if you're used to not really grabbing that yarn as much, so then it gets stuck under the hook when you try to switch, at least that was my experience. Um, so Kim, I used a 4.5 millimeter up to, a, use a seven millimeter with this? That's super interesting. It must have been a very open and uh, sheer gauge. Uh, but with my usual hook with is a 5.5 because I can't, okay, so you're a tight crocheter already. That makes sense. I tend to be right in the middle with my gauge. So I, I liked the four millimeter. 
And yes, the Kobu is super soft. Um, Marquita, I think, yeah, trying a larger hook might be helpful. Um, I, yeah, I would go ahead and give it a try. That might, that might help you. And boy is good. I have an Addy and that works pretty well too. I really like the Addy color coded. They've become my favorite crochet hooks. Um, thanks y'all. Check them out. Awesome. So let's get to the details. There we go. <laughs> so this, so my slide says 50% cotton and 50% rayon from bamboo. And that's what I pulled off of the website that I took the Kobu yarn picture from. So I don't know if this was rounded or if at some point it changed from 49 to 50. I'm not really sure exactly what happened, but it's only 1% change between the two, which isn't going to be that big of a difference. Um, it is a DK weight yarn. You get 232 yards for 100 grams. It's $5.99, which honestly is not a bad price point when you look at the way that it behaves if you're going to compare it to other yarns like this one. I used the 4.0 millimeter USG hook on my crochet swatch, and I used a 4.0 millimeter on my knit swatch, which is a US 6. So I was able to use the same size. I feel like I got um, a just great fabric overall with them. And you know what, when I was showing off the swatches, I didn't show you, um, I like to stretch these out, just so you can get an idea of exactly how tight the gauge is. I forgot to do that. It'll, it helps pick up some of the characteristics of the yarn, but the drape, that's the most noticeable thing about this, but it is also nice and stretchy. It's got some memory to it. It goes back to what it was. Okay, so back to the slides. The patterns that I found were endless. My goodness, uh, there are so many patterns available for this yarn that I was looking for what I would best use this for, which is garments. So when it came to crochet, I found this super cute Sweet Summer Tea by Rachel Misner, which is free or available as a PDF for $3.50. It is a very basic V-neck tee that I think you'll be able to show off the nice drape. And I really, I just loved it overall. You can never go wrong with a basic tee, especially if you get a pattern like this one and you want to add your own spice to it, it would be really simple to do. So I definitely recommend basic patterns for that reason. But if you're looking for something more complicated, I really liked this Sage Summer Dream by T Designs, which is $8.99, so it's up there. But I'm sure creating this pattern was a lot of work because it is a lacier type pattern. And I just thought it was super cute. It's not, I don't know what you would call it. It's kind of like a poncho type pattern. I don't think that the sleeves were connected, although you could connect them. Maybe more like a Ruana, but you can see it's opened on the sides there. I think she just kind of has it connected, but not closed so that you could have a little more versatility with the way that you wear it. But I think that this design best shows off the drape as well. And I like the little lace detail patterns. So you could go, super basic with the tee or a little more adventurous with something like that kind of a cover up wrap Ruana style. I don't really know the best way to describe that style of pattern. And then the knit patterns. Again, I went with the basic garments because I really like the way that they work up and you can just see the drape in this yarn. It's also a great starting point for being a little more adventurous and adding your own style and flair to something. But this perfect knit t-shirt, you can just see the comfort, the drape and how soft this is. I bet that's such a comfortable shirt. I bet, yeah, I would just want to wear it all the time. And so this one is also free on her website or $5 for the PDF. I have all of these patterns linked in the description box below. If you end up loving any of them, you can just go find the link down below. And then the Opal Tank, which is by Alexandra Tavel of Two of Wands. I think she's had a pattern in almost every one of these swatch and reviews. She has some great patterns that I really enjoy and I, she does a great job of working with people's favorite yarns, I guess. Or maybe maybe she's just so well known of a designer that people work with the yarn she recommends and that's how they start becoming popular. Who knows? But I do enjoy her patterns and I really like this basic tank that she has. You can't see the back of it. It's like a razor back where it is connected in the center 
and it's got the cutouts on the sides, like kind of like how sports bras are in the back. And I thought that was super cute. The only thing is this pattern had seemed to have a little bit of a deep armpit hole, but I think that you could tweak the pattern a little bit and get a better fit for you. Because again, it is such a basic pattern. I did like these basic patterns that could really show off the stitch definition and drape that this yarn provides. And you can see from the images of the patterns, I can go back to the last one too, Again, it's not that shiny for having, you know, 50% rayon from bamboo. So I, I really like that because I'm not a fan of shiny tops. Um, let's see. I think I made that tea. <laughs> the crochet one, the simple, the simple one, uh, this one, the sweet summer tea. Yeah, I kind of want to make that tea. It's really cute and it looks super basic and easy. Um, I love, I love the drape. And then they're all lovely. I think so too. So let's move on to the final yarn, which is very similar to Lion Brand's Kobu. And that's Universal Yarn Bamboo Pop. So here is the Bamboo Pop. And what's interesting, so this is 50% cotton, 50% bamboo. What's interesting is that they don't look alike at all, at all. This is a DK weight yarn as well, but you can tell that it is already a little bit finer. Do you see the squish that I'm talking about now with Kobu? It's a plump yarn and it's that trapped air. You can see just by looking at it, why it is a little splittier than some of the other yarns. Where this one has a tighter twist, but the color's not solid either. Now, I can't tell based on the plies whether this is a fully blended fiber before it's spun, but I can tell because of the way that this is the way that this took the dyes um and it could be because they're using different types of dyes uh because plant-based fibers don't take dye the same way that animal-based fibers take dye. So, and even synthetic fibers take dye. So I am I believe the issue here is with the dye that they use. And it's not an issue. I do like the appearance that it's not a super solid color, but what seems to be happening, and let me take this comment down, is that some of the plies are the bamboo and some of the plies are the cotton and the cotton and the bamboo took the dye differently is what it looks like, unless they purposefully dyed the bamboo a lighter color or the cotton a lighter color and purposefully dyed the bamboo a darker color and then plied them, which is also a possibility. But I'm not sure that's exactly what's going on here. Just because I know the nature of fiber, I think the dye just took differently to these two fibers, which helps you identify when you unply it that it is individual plies of bamboo and individual plies of cotton then being plied together. And that may be the case for Kobu, but because it is all the same color. It's really hard for me to try to identify that. Um, it could be one strand of bamboo applied with one strand of cotton and then a bunch of those strands all applied together, or it could be blended. So um, probably not though. Like my spinner mind is thinking and I'm like, it's probably not though because cotton is such a short staple and synthetic fibers. Well, you could make them any staple that you wanted, although it would be a little bit more work. I think, I think, when it comes to actually manufacturing the yarn, it's probably a lot easier just to do a 100% bamboo thread and a 100% cotton thread and then ply those together. Um, so thoughts on that. Those are my thoughts on that. So the biggest thing that I've noticed in difference is just the way that the color hits. Now this is a lighter, duller color than the Kobu. So it is a little harder to tell. Um, it seems like it's not as shiny, but I think it's because of the dull color of this blue. So I don't know 100% for sure, but we've got the same, almost the same drape. No, Kobu's got more drape. Like this one doesn't have bad drape, but the, Ko the Kobu's drape's just crazy. Now I did use a tighter hook on this one, I went down a half a millimeter size just because it is a little bit more open because it's not as plump 
as the kobu is. It's just a little bit more tightly wound, which means it's also not quite as soft as the kobu, but it is still soft. Um, and it does have decent stretch to it, decent memory. The knit swatch has a little bit more a little bit more drape than the crochet swatch. And it has, uh, it just feels great. This is, this is a, like a top contender as well. I do think that I prefer the Kobu more, but this is still a really nice yarn and it could just be the color, but it also does have a little bit less shine to it. So if you don't like the shine, this could be a different option for you. Um, but yeah, overall I enjoyed it. It was a little splitty like the Kobu as well. Um, I don't know that I have any major standout split areas because it wasn't as splitty because it is more tightly wound, but I still had a problem with it. I went all the way up until this week without having issues with yarn splitting. And then all of the sudden, <laughs> three out of the four yarns this week just were a little splitty. I, like, I wouldn't say crazy bad to the point that I couldn't work with them. But again, as we talked about with the Kobu, that might be because of the type of the hook type of hook that I use. But um, yeah, I did have some splitting issues this week. So let's move on to the details about this yarn. So 50% bamboo, 50% cotton. It's a DK weight, just like the, the Kobu. It's 292 yards and it's 100 grams, but it retails for 350, which, or 950, sorry. <laughs> I was looking at the 3.5 ounces. It retails for 950, which is quite a bit more. If we back up in the slides, Kobu's 599. So with that big of a price difference, I think that I would just end up going for the Kobu, um, even though it is just like the, the, the smallest tad bit, a little more splitty. Um, I think the price difference between the two is enough that I would just, I would just go for the Kobu. Um, and then I did go down in hook size. Like I said, I went to a 3.5, which is a USE and the needle size as well. I went down to a 3.5, which is a US four. And that was just because even though this is a DK weight yarn, it's tighter twist makes it its diameter, not quite as thick. So even with the yardage being the same, it just doesn't have the same thickness as the Kobu, Kobu does. It's just not as plump. Um, but it is overall, it's still a nice yarn. And when you're looking at the Kobu, you know, this one has been my favorite. For So for this one to be just a step under Kobu, it is still an amazing yarn. Um, it's just when they're in direct comparison, I do like the Kobu more. Um, and then I was able to find some good patterns for this yarn as well. So I found this Time After Time Top by Margaret Wilson, and I think it does a great job of utilizing the drape that you get from this yarn. And because the yarns are so similar, I think you could easily sub Kobu in these patterns, maybe having to go up a hook size or, you know, just for gauge just a little bit because it is a little different. But I really liked the open work and the solid parts and even in between the solid, um, those color changes there. I thought just overall, this was a really cute design and I liked um, how it's got that A-line appearance from the bust. You can see down at the hips, it's much wider than it is at the bust, which is really a necessity when you're looking at making anything that goes past your hips. You really have to have those increases so that it doesn't, because what ends up happening is it will squeeze around your hips and then right up. And then you have all this weird extra gapping material around your tummy. So I think that, that the, the, the design did a great job with that. And then this breakers tee, you can see the drape even better because it's in a solid stitch versus changing back and forth between the two stitches, which creates like a change in density, which takes away from that drape a little bit. But the solid stitch top, you can really see. I just think it's so beautiful. And sure, it is a little sheer. You might have to wear a tank top under it. So it's a little more in between seasons, or you could use it as like a bathing suit cover up. She is near water there. Uh, but I really, I think this pattern did a great job of showing off the drape as well by making it kind of an oversized top versus like that summer solstice top we saw earlier that was super tight. You don't really get a chance to 
to utilize that drape when something's so tight fitting. So I really liked both of these crochet patterns. And then for the knit patterns, I found a bunch of cute ones, but I was just in love with the design of this mitered square tank. I just, I don't know what it is. I just absolutely love it. And this is a free pattern that is on her website. And I just, I absolutely love it. And I think part of it is that at first I couldn't tell that it was a mitered square. Like the, I didn't look at the title. I was just looking at the pictures and that change in color that gives you those little geometric Vs, I just think it's super cute. And I actually do really like the colors that she picked. So it is a little bit tighter fitting than the others, but you could you could modify that a little bit or make the next size up to take advantage of the drape of the yarn a little bit more. Um, but I did think that it had nice details on it and the armhole looked like a great fit. I like the neckline. I just overall really like that top. And then the one on the right, the panoramic top, it's kind of hard to see the details because of how small the picture is and how um, I might be able to make it even bigger. Yeah, that's not much bigger. <laughs> But I really, the yarn is so light, it's hard to see. But there are lace details in, um, can, can I actually, let's see if I can just zoom this in a little bit. No, I can't. Um, there are like little lace details around the bottom of the top that I thought were really delicate and pretty and worked well with the yarn. And it, it's a tighter fitting design, but you can still see there's enough ease that there's some of that drape on the body. So I really liked that top for that reason. Oops. And so that is all of the yarns that I had to talk about today. So I will share the only three yarns that are left. I cannot believe that I've almost made it through 15 of these yarns. It's gone by super quickly. I've been keeping everything in this bag, this turkey trot that I did, which was a, I think, I don't remember if I did the 5K or the 10K. I think it was the 10K. Um, but here are my final three. And I think the reason I saved these for last is because I had to wind them in order to use them. All of the other balls, for the most part, came in little donuts or skeins or I'm trying to think. Yeah, mostly skeins and donuts. But these three came in hank form and I had to wind them up. So they don't look as cool as when I originally got them. But this one is Haiku Kobasi, which is a cotton bamboo silk blend. And I've worked with it before. So I'm excited to swatch it up. Um, and I'll be able to share next week actual samples out of this yarn too. Because I have a pair of socks that I've crocheted out of this yarn. And I have a tank top that I knit out of this base of yarn, but the DK weight. So the original is fingering weight, and then the DK weight is obviously DK weight. It's called the Kobasi DK. Uh, so I'll have a sample for of knit and crochet for this on top of the swatches. And then this one is Pearl Soho's Cotton Pure, and it's a 100% organic cotton. So, so far I've only swatched one other organic cotton yarn, and this was cotton yarn number two that was recommended. I do believe this is on a higher price point of yarns, um, but I am excited to give it a try. It has a very natural hand to it, and I do enjoy that a lot. And then this one is Blue Sky Fibers Organic Cotton, which is a worsted weight, and I've also worked with this yarn before. Out of the three organic cottons that I've got, this one is the softest by far, but it also has a little bit of like a fuzzy halo to it. So um, I'm going to see how this washes because I do have a project in the works that's just been in like hibernation forever. I kind of, it was supposed to be a baby blanket for my son, I think. I can't remember if it was for my daughter. No, it was for my daughter who is now six. And it's because it was back when I learned to knit. I did like a year long mystery blanket knit along that was supposed to help you learn new techniques for knitting. I like knew the very basic knits. And I got it. There was only one square a month that came out and I got so bored waiting for the squares. And I did so many other knitting projects that my skills quickly surpassed the blanket. And then I was bored, like just making these squares where I was supposed to learn something, but I already learned it. 
and I gave up on it. <laughs> but I will be able to share that blanket next week that is like at least three quarters of the way done and it's all out of this organic cotton. So while I've worked with it, I haven't really blocked it or used it at all. It's been in storage. So we'll be able to give it a little bit of a better look with the swatch. But yeah, so these are the three yarns. I've only got three for next week. And then after this is over, um, I don't know where we're going to be going from there. So if you have any suggestions, um, let me know. I think I want to stick to swatching and reviewing yarns. I just don't know if I want to stick to cotton and cotton blends or if we should stick, if we should go off to other fiber contents. I think I would like to keep them all the same kind of type of fiber contents versus doing something like worsted weights and it could be a range. I like being able to compare similar yarns. So that could be another thing that we could do is find a bunch of yarns that are almost identical in the way that Kobu and Universal uh, Bamboo Pop are. And then we could, I would be able to review price and direct swatch comparison. Um, I think maybe I might like that a little bit more. We'll see. But yeah, so that's all that I had to talk about this week. Let me know in the comments below if you have ideas for after next week of what you would like to see. And until then, I will see you for the next Swatch Fest Saturday Live next Saturday at 9 a.m. Thank you so much for joining me this morning. And I will see you then. Happy crafting. Bye.